Tell me about how you met him. Well, I met him in seminary, interestingly enough, in 1952. Uh, there was something called the, the uh, interseminary movement, which was put together so that theological students, both white and black, could meet without being arrested. And in 1952, Virginia Union School of Religion was the venue for the Middle Atlantic region. And Dr. King came as a delegate with a couple of other fellows, who I don't remember now. And I met him then. I was president of my class. He was president of his class at, Ch at Crozier Theological Seminary in Chester, Pennsylvania. And we just hit it off. You know, we were both preacher's kids. And uh, Sam Proctor, who I mentioned earlier, was working on his Ph.D. at Boston University, and they knew each other. And according to Mike King, he had mentioned to him that he had a very bright uh, science student who had gone into the seminary. And King's first words was, you, oh, you're the science student who went into the ministry. And I had to confess that I was, because I had done well in science. I finished undergraduate school magna cum laude. and. Uh, wanted to be a doctor, and uh, King's father was a minister, and my father was a minister, so it was a, you and know, we just hit it off, yeah. What were your first impressions of him? I never, I, 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 did, I didn't think he was the kind of fellow who would bring a, win the Nobel Peace Prize, but I must say that from the time I met him in 1952, the time I stood behind, beside him in Oslo, Norway, he wore the same size hat. He never changed. He was a marvelous human being. Well, it, it sounds like as young men you were both sort of uh, jokesters and you liked to, you had the same sense of humor. You know, in my, in my career, all of the great people that I've met have had two enduring qualities. They don't take themselves too seriously, and they have a keen sense of humor. And I speak of Sam Proctor. I speak of, uh, of Nelson Mandela. But all the great people I've met, including Martin King, they never take themselves too seriously, and they have a keen sense of humor. Benny Mays, you know, those are two enduring characteristics I've always found in great people. And it's it's interesting because I, I think most people would not were not aware that Dr. King had that side of him. Yeah, in fact, Time Magazine once described him as the unsmiling Dr. King. But the best times we had were when, you know, after a campaign was over or a demonstration was over, we would sit around and tell funny stories. You know, I remember in Mississippi. One time, Dr. King was t was uh, in a demonstration somewhere in Mississippi, and uh, Abernathy was praying, and Dr. King said, "said Ralph was praying, but I had my eyes open." <laughs> said I, I knew I was in Mississippi, and all of us tr tried to find a funny story to bring back to Dr. King to tell him because he knew he had such a, a sense of humor about him.